Good morning. It's Monday morning, and look who's back. Ethel's back. She actually came back Friday. Uh, she's doing better. She is eating. She's drinking. She's still getting oral antibiotics. Um, she ended up just just needing some hydration more than anything, some stuff to make her stomach feel better. She's mad at me, though. Uh, she's actually gotten a lot better, but uh, she's just not... She's mad. So she's been... She's been running away from me. Uh, she won't take any treats. She is not really eating grain too much, but she is eating hay. I can tell, I've seen her eating, and I can tell when I give her oral antibiotic, you know, some, some hay will sometimes come out because it's a fight. It takes both Jeff and I to medicate her, and uh, you can tell she's just like crabby. <laughs> I brought some apples for her. I don't know that she'll eat apples. I honestly have never given her an apple, but I thought I thought I would try and win my way back into her heart with maybe some treats, maybe. <laughs> Ethel, you can like me. It'll be okay. I am on the lookout for uh, a Jenny donkey, a mini donkey, or a gelding. I have found one on Facebook, but it was a scam. That's a pretty common thing. Um, I am going to talk to one of the local auction houses. I've heard that they sometimes get donkeys through. Do you want apple? And I do have a gelding mini donkey. A friend of mine has one, and I can, once her stitches are somewhat more healed and stuff, I will um, bring him out to the ranch so she can have a mini donkey while I'm in the search for one. I don't really know that she doesn't like she's not a huge treat donkey so I'm not super surprised but I thought I would try something she is like I said she's doing good she's going out into the dry lot during the day and she can't go out into like multi-species pasture yet and and that's okay like she is going out and she's with the other animals and stuff I do think she's somewhat depressed and the vet thought that too donkeys are pretty emotional and so we just gotta we just gotta get her feeling better not only physically but emotionally as well and a friend will help but I know she's going to go to bucking and kicking and stuff if I put another donkey with with her so she needs just a little bit more time um, her stitches and suture and stuff look good it is down here I'm not going to show it to you guys but yeah no she's doing she's doing much better so she's been rolling and uh, she is dusty do you want apple no She's like, no, I don't, I don't like you. I don't trust you. We're not friends no more. We'll get there. So I actually need to get her antibiotics into her. And that is, like I said, quite the dilemma. So I'm going to do that. And then we're going to do some stuff in the garden. It is time to plant crops for winter. So we need to get that done before the 1st of August. So I'm going to kind of show you how I flip a high tunnel from spring and summer in, into winter production. So I'm going to get a few chores done. And then I'll be back. And we'll be in the high tunnel. Okay, she's eating the apple. I had to shove it in her mouth, but she's eating it. So maybe that's some progress. Maybe she'll start to like me again. Is that good? <laughs> she's like the slowest eater ever. <laughs> but that's good. I'm so glad she ate it. I did have to like forcibly shove it in her mouth, but she's having a little treat, so good deal. Do you want another one? What if I just place it on the ground underneath you? He's still working on the other one. You're so silly.
going to go get your antibiotics. You can just enjoy that, okay? We'll let you have some alone time. I am in the spring high tunnel. I call it spring because that's what it started out as. Now we have some summer crops in here and we're transitioning into winter crops. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. This is kind of the ugly part of gardening where like I'm finishing up some stuff like the scallions and the kale and chard are going to like hang out in here all summer and that's what I'll harvest from. But I've got like some winter stuff in like sweet potatoes, but like I have a bunch of space where we've taken stuff out. Things have finished like lettuce and radishes and spinach. And there's some weeds growing because the water's still on. Some of it I've turned off, but I've kind of interplanted some things as crops have come out. And so some places I need water. Some places are just watering dirt and that means we're growing weeds. So this ugly in between is what I'm going to fix today. It is like hot in here already, of course, because it's the high tunnel. I am going to roll up the side some more because I can get that open more. We have like no breeze. It's supposed to be like 90 degrees today, but it's going to be like 103 later this week. So I need to take care of this. I was not going to water this this morning because it's easier to hoe and that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wheel hoe through and the stirrup hoe and get um, this all cleaned up and get it ready to be planted again. I forgot to turn the water off last night so it's wet and I've got one zone that my timer is not working on and so I just kicked it on because like the rainbow chard needs water so um, and it's flooding right there. <laughs> so I've got a few problems in here and today's about fixing this. I will get this hoed, get it cleaned up. Uh, pull all the drip out where I need to and then this evening when it's cooler I'm gonna come back and plant it and then put the drip back and get stuff started germinating Over here to my right is sweet potatoes that I'll harvest like September October All right, here's some kohlrabi that is left over from spring I we've harvested and sold a bunch and I went to baskets But there's still just a few that needed just a little bit more time. We interplanted the sweet potatoes while this was still very much in there because sweet potatoes come as like a stick with like one leaf on top and so there was enough space we'd harvested enough things that the sweet potatoes went in uh, so that bed is taken care of i have hand weeded it although i can see that i did a potentially pretty crappy job but <laughs> weeds are like a forever thing in the garden uh, this bed was like lettuce and arugula and spinach down at the other end so i'm gonna take the drip out all my drip and stuff comes from Dripworks, and it is a three-quarter inch main line and that I punch holes into and then I put drip tape into. So it's just a really easy system once you kind of figure out what you're doing. I mean, like when I first started it, I was like, I have no idea how to use drip. And it's actually pretty simple. And the best way to learn is just to kind of dive into it and trial and error and figure out what works. The big thing with the drip system is you have to reduce your pressure. So I have pressure reducers on all of my manifolds and I knock it down to like 25 PSI. The well that I'm irrigating off of has like 80 PSI. So I would blow the ends like it just wouldn't work. You have to reduce your pressure. There is connectors that pop into the main line. They have little barbs on them and then it attaches to the drip. You twist the screen part, it attaches. They, uh, it's something you still have to check all the time because you will pop ends, you will um, come loose from the barb. Like irrigation is something that I check pretty much like almost every single day because very quickly if you have an irrigation problem and stuff isn't getting watered, you know, you're gonna have dead crops. So I'm gonna pop out the main line, or I'm gonna pop the barbs out from the main line and then pull the drip out of the way. It'll just be easier if I pull it to the side, run the wheel hoe through, get this all prepped and uh, get it looking nice again. I will also like hand hoe some of it. So that's the plan. I'm just gonna probably set the camera up and uh, I'm gonna work. And then if I think of something along the way that you guys might have questions or clarification on, uh, we'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll come back and I'll chat with you. So let's get to work. It is so hot. Why did I do this to myself? <laughs>
one thing while I think of it, I always staple my drip in, like the line, the drip tape. Oh, and the drip tape, it has emitters. This isn't a great angle, I will show you. But it has emitters and you can buy it at different spacing. So I have tape that has 12 inch emitters every 12 inches, some that has it every eight inches. This is all like every four inch, which works really well for like lettuce and stuff that like is densely planted. Tomatoes, they're on 12 inch emitter drip tape. But throughout the length of the drip tape, I will put in landscape staples because as they get hot and they contract at nighttime because of the temperature change, you'll get a lot of like, it'll wiggle. And it gets better once the crops are big, but when you're germinating and you just have nothing to hold it in, I found I have to put staples in. And I don't know, I probably put them in every like six to eight feet just to keep the drip tape where I want it while I'm going through the germination process. For years I did overhead watering in this high tunnel and that meant that there were weeds everywhere. And this is a perfect example of what happens when you don't control your water. So I actually had this hose broke, it came apart there, and I didn't notice it for probably several hours. The celery, that's what this crop is, is celery, it looked like I should have been growing rice in here, it was extremely flooded. But the aftermath of that is that I get all of these weeds here in areas that I'm not growing anything. This is what that area should look like. There should be an occasional weed. I do get some condensation in here. If the rains, it doesn't rain anymore. We're done with rain season. But you know, around the edges and stuff, like I get some weeds because some moisture does creep under. These structures aren't like waterproof, but this is what happens when you have water that goes everywhere. You get weeds everywhere. So I'm gonna fix that. I am using a stirrup hoe. This is from Johnny's. I believe it's a four inch stirrup hoe. They come in different sizes. I also have a two inch, I think. Uh, this is my, one of my favorite tools is the stirrup hoe. And if you are starting to garden or have a garden or you're wanting to scale up or you're struggling with weeds, this would be definitely one of the tools I would say to invest in. Johnny's has a lot of really great hand tools that make life substantially easier. So this is most effective when the soil is dry, like it is right here, and you just scrape along the very top of the surface, and you're just popping those roots out so that they get exposed to air and they die. It's super simple. I don't have a hydrant in this high tunnel. My hydrants are in the other one, and then I obviously just have a hose that comes over and connects this manifold to my water supply. But yeah, this is super simple. The wheel hoe is from Haas Tools. It's a great tool. I really like it. The stirrup hoe from Johnny's is a great tool. There's tons of other companies. Like, you don't have to buy from those companies. But yeah, it works really well. And it, like, saves your back. Like, it's just a lot easier. And you can go forward, you can go backward. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. 
So that's kind of what that looks like after you're done. There will maybe be a weed or two that comes back, but for the most part, that will eliminate 95% of them. So I have one full bed done. I divide this high tunnel in two and there's a middle walkway. And so I'll have two different crops that I will plant here. One in the front part, a different crop in the back. And I may plant, you know, half of it into one thing. I don't quite have a plan yet as to what I'm planting, but we'll get there. Here's the sweet potatoes. It is a vine. I did it over here on this side. You can see I pushed all the vines kind of into the bed. That's something that I have to do every few days. Over here, they are walking out. And I don't want that because I want to be able to use this walkway as a walkway. So I'm going to get this bread all prepped. Same thing, there's nothing running both of these um, lengths of this high tunnel. This bed is completely empty. So I'm going to get the drip moved, get it hoed. And then I've got celery here in this front part. That back part is, I think, going to be Napa cabbage. I have some started in the grow room. It's not ready to transplant. But I am going to weed it because I have bindweed growing in the back corner and we don't want that. I just take the sweet potato vines, move them in easy peasy. Everything is hoed and it is ready to be raked. That's going to be the next step is actually I'm going to let this dry for a few hours. It is noon so I'm right in the heat of the day. I am going to let this dry. I am going to come back with my big landscape rake, pull out some of these weeds, some of the foliage that's left behind in the beds, and then plant. I'm going to plant stuff like beets, carrots, I'm going to leave space for Napa cabbage that's going to go in later, and I'm going to like look through my seeds and see what else I have. I know I have some arugula that I'd like to get in the ground, some lettuce, some spinach, so I'm just going to look through the seeds, see what I have, and come back when it cools off late till this evening, or maybe if I get a cloud. If it clouds in, then it'll be tolerable in here, and I can come back and finish this project. I will do one more harvest of these collard greens here before I pull these out. So I'll probably put these in my veggie baskets next week for Edible Prairie Project. And then I will go ahead and pull them out because they're going to start to bolt and they're going to start to get bitter. This is weeds and there's jicama growing in here amongst the weeds. I have never grown jicama before. I feel like it should be a lot bigger at this point in the year. So it may be somewhat of a failure. I need to weed that. I can do a lot with the hoe, but it is very wet, this bed is, because I've had some irrigation timer problems. So yeah, probably next week this will come out. These scallions will come out. They are going to go in baskets tomorrow, and then I'll probably pull the rest out for farm store, and I will either dehydrate a bunch of them, or uh, last year I made some pickled scallions, which were a big hit, so I'll probably do some of that too. And then we'll have like almost a full bed, you know, both sides. So. There is also like a little tiny room, bit of room there by the rainbow chard. I need to go through that, cut some of it off. Some of it's bolting. Some of it needs to get pulled out, but some of it's doing really well still. And it'll do better if I can keep it alive till we cool down and then it'll do really well again in the fall. There's a tiny bit of room there. I may throw in like a row of radish or something, but I don't want it to get shaded by the rainbow chard as it keeps growing. Hello. It is many hours later. Well, about like six hours later and I'm back in the high tunnel and I'm gonna finish planting. So I have raked most of what I hoed earlier. There are still a few weeds, that's okay. I will get those later, it does not need to be perfect. I'm gonna rake this one out so you guys can see how I do that. And then I'm gonna use the Jang Cedar to put a variety of different crops in. So I just went through my seed collection that I have and pulled a bunch of stuff that I want to have more of and stuff that I want to be able to harvest into like November and December. Um, if you notice, I don't know if you can see it, you will like as we plant and stuff, there's like, it looks like there's garbage everywhere. There is garbage everywhere. And uh, this is what it is. So I, I use a paper pot chains for certain crops. And what this is, is it's a, it's a standard like seed tray size. It's a little different seed size, like from what you buy, like at the nursery or whatever. 10 by 20 and uh, it's like a honeycomb of like this one long continuous chain of of paper and it has these little holes in it and so I you're able to plant seedlings in here I plant seeds in here and then you can transplant them without disturbing the roots and so certain things like scallions are kind of hard to transplant if you're doing it just in a traditional plug system they work great in the paper pot system uh, lettuce. I had a bunch of mini lettuce over in that bed and that's where all of this is like working its way back up through the soil. 
I like the paper pot system and I can show it to you guys at some point later on. I have nothing planted in it right now. Uh, but it's like, these don't break down. They do, but it takes like a super long time. So I find these all over the place. I do try and pick them up, but the wind gets them and they kind of just like keep working their way up. So they're in here a lot because I use it a lot for springtime crops. And then I have it some out in the outdoor garden too. So like fennel, scallions, lettuces, uh, bok choy, I all start in the paper pot system. Oh, some people do like beets and carrots. I've never done that, but it's a neat system, but it has its drawbacks. This is one of them. So I'm not picking it up today. I will be back later to pick that up. So let's rake out this bed. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to just be a little bit more even, a little bit smoother. The paper pot got stuck in my rake. So I just have a large landscape rake. And I mean, I'm just raking. It's not like super technical, but I can see that I missed a few weeds with the hoe, which is fine. Like I said, this doesn't need to be perfect. So a couple of things that I want to talk about is one, I don't walk in my beds, so I don't have to like till or anything. You know, the soil stays nice and fluffy. I till at the beginning of the season, which for this was March. And then like I try to avoid as much compaction as possible. So I'm not stepping foot inside these beds. So I have 12 inch walkways in here approximately. And then the beds in here are a little bit different. They're wider than 30 inches in all the outdoor garden space. It's 30 inch beds in here. I kind of use some of my end wall markers to, to put in beds. The high tunnel is 30 foot wide. So I don't really like have to till or anything. I don't have to take a broad fork and break up the soil. Like I have sandy loamy soil. That's what's throughout the ranch. It stays pretty fluffy throughout the growing season. And so just kind of breaking up that top layer, like everything will be good. It'll grow just fine. I have a bunch of different seeds that we're gonna plant. So I've got things like spinach, I've got uh, beets, I've got golden beets, red beets. I have orange carrots, I have purple carrots. I think I got purple, yep, I sure did. I've got parsley, I have cilantro, and I have a few zucchini. I'm gonna stick a couple zucchini in here See if they'll survive like our first frost being in here and I can throw a frost protection blanket over the top of them and when my zucchini outside peters out and is done for like I'm gonna put like four in not like a lot just a few I've never done that so that's an experiment I am not putting any lettuce or radish in right now because I have space in the big garden that stuff is coming out and I will put those in outside there's plenty of time still for those to mature outside and then once this row of scallions is out and the collards and stuff like I'll have some more room to play with here but I want to get some of the stuff that is a little bit longer day to maturity and get it in the ground now so that's why I've chosen what I have chosen and I want to talk about the timing of this so I it doesn't freeze like the soil doesn't freeze in here the air will freeze it will it's essentially if there's like at nighttime it's essentially the same temperature outside as it is in here but because if we get any sort of UV you know warming and stuff like if the sun shines at all it warms up in here even on a cloud cover day like it will warm up slightly in here it doesn't stay very warm in here in the winter time like in december when the days are super short but what i can do in here is if i plant stuff now and i get stuff in the ground by the first of august it is typically at maturity or pretty dang close to maturity by the time we hit the first week in november what happens for us at our latitude the first week of November is that we drop below 10 hours a day of sunlight. Once you're at 10 hours or less of sunlight, stuff doesn't really grow. And so what it does is it hangs out. And so things like beets and carrots that are below the soil and the soil doesn't freeze, they just hang out. It's kind of like a refrigerator and a storage area for me. So I can come in and I can harvest that stuff when I need it for the farm store or to make things like pickled beets and stuff. So. That's what I use this stuff for now, but I need to get it in the ground by like the first week in August to the first of August is even better. I'm a little bit early, which is kind of surprising, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> so that's why I'm planting this stuff now. This primarily will not be harvested until after I'm done with the outside stuff. 
but like cilantro, it can survive a frost. And I make salsa like all winter long. I won't have this cilantro all winter long, but up until like December, I will be able to come out here and on a sunny day when it warms up and gets above freezing in here, I'll be able to uncover my cilantro and I'll be able to harvest it and put it in my salsa that I sell in the farm store. So that's what we're doing. Then, yeah, I'll put some lettuce and some radish when we get closer to fall because those are our much shorter days to maturity. They're like 21, 25 days. So, but yeah, spinach, I need spinach for my baskets. My weed pressure is less in here and the farm store needs spinach too. Everybody loves spinach, but I have less weeds in here than I do out there. So it's like much easier to grow it in here than it is out in the big garden. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use the Jang seeder. It's super easy. This should go pretty fast. And then I just need to pop the drip back in and uh, get some water to it. Okay, so I was wrong. I'm not actually gonna use the Jang seeder just yet. I'm gonna plant the zucchini. I have a green machine zucchini and I have uh, yellow zucchini squash golden glory. So what I'm gonna do, because I've kind of got this high tunnel thing figured out a little bit, is it stays warmer in the center. So I am, this is my center walkway. So you can see like I've got collards over here. I've got rainbow chart over there. So that's that center walkway that I use to divide my crops and just to make navigation easier in here. And so I'm gonna put some zucchini on, I'm gonna put two plants on this side, two plants on that side. I'm also not on the edges. Like I'm two beds in from my end wall and three beds in. So this is kind of roughly like the center. It's gonna stay warmer here than it would be if I put it on the end walls or on the long sides. So this will help ensure, like zucchini is super frost susceptible. This is an experiment. I don't know if this will work, but I'm gonna try it. It'll be fun if we have some extra zucchini and maybe we'll have some zucchini like into October, depending on how winter goes. I'm gonna do four, but you do put like three seeds in each thing. So I just dig a little hole, drop a few seeds in, easy peasy. Oh, I should mark that because I don't want to like seed spinach and stuff over it. Mm, I'm going to need more space than that. <laughs> Zucchini get big. All right. I drew a line with my hand. So that was the green machine. I could have, if I thought about this like a couple weeks ago, I could have started these in the grow room, but I didn't think about it. So I'm just putting them directly in the ground, which is what I do in the summertime. I just direct seed my cucumbers and summer squash and stuff like and zucchini. Like they do much better because of our wind and stuff here if I just direct seed them. So there I marked. So I will plant, I don't know what I'm planting yet down there. I'm going to put spinach over here. Uh, but I'll just plant my other crops and I'll stop at that line. The zucchini is going to get much bigger than this, but you will just deal. Spacing on your packets is just a suggestion. The first thing that I want to plant is spinach, and it's going to go in this front bed over here. So I'm using the Jang seeder. It's right here. I'll show it to you. But it takes a hopper, and then it takes different wheels with different size holes and different spacing to depending on like which crop you're going to plant. Let me look and see what's in here. I believe it has the one in it that I need. The kind of pain in the butt thing is like you have to, like the, the rollers are numbered. You have to take it all apart to see. No, that's not the one I want. So a variety of different rollers for different things. I want F24, which I'll show you how this works. You can see that. So yeah, different rollers. These ones are wider, deeper, and then they either come in like, so this is YX12. So there's only 12 holes going around and it's a much smaller hole. And then I think this one does, like I have a chart. This one does cucumbers and there's only like three this is oh four J four. So for the most part, I know like which roller I use for what stuff, but sometimes I have to look them up. And there's just a chart online. There's a PDF that I use all the time. So I'm going to use F24 to plant 
spinach. It also works for radishes. And what else do I plant with F24? I don't remember. <laughs> Cilantro. So we put this all back together. Oh, the nice thing about the jing cedar, I'll show this to you too. I had an earthway cedar for years and it worked great. Like it was a great introduction to like using a push cedar. The jang cedar just has like more functions. So this little brush, you can actually move like up and down. And so it depends, like if it's down all the way, it's gonna brush the seeds off. So you're gonna get just like one in there at a time. It's not down all the way, but you get the point. And then if you want more seeds to go through, you raise it up, down, one seed per hole, up, potentially more are gonna slip through. So depending on what you're planting and like, if you have like, I sometimes have to put the brush up if I have something that's just like sticking really bad, that just doesn't wanna seem to move through very well. Um, things like beets can be, like they're a funky seed and sometimes they just don't seem to wanna go through. Or if you have a roller that's maybe like a little small for what you're trying to plant, I have found that if you just open up that brush just a little tiny bit, sometimes you can get by with having less rollers because they're not expensive, but you know, the less you can buy, the better, I think. I am planting smooth leaf spinach. This is space, is the variety. It is an F1 hybrid. I won't need this many seeds, but I'm gonna fill it up. Fill it on. I'll move the camera and show you how it pops into the cedar. The sprocket, gear, wheel, whatever you want to call it, clicks down into here. There is a chain. This is chain driven. And then you just want to make sure that that is latched. And then it is locked in. As you push the chain turns, that turns that. It drops the seed down in. Super easy. And then you just push it and it is dropping the seed down into the ground and it's burying it and everything for you. There's our line for our spinach or our zucchini. So that's where I'm going to stop the spinach and the hopper or where it drops out is actually down there. So that's where I stop behind me. It leaves this little track so you can tell where you've planted which is extremely helpful. The seed is not actually spread out throughout that width of that track that it leaves. It's actually down the center. Spinach can be very densely planted. Your rows can be, and you kind of want them to be densely planted. So one, it's easy to harvest. Two, it kind of gives itself some support and keeps it up off the ground. I am putting my next track right next to the one I had previously planted so that I get a very dense crop of spinach in this bed. It does have a kickstand. You have to make sure you put that up otherwise you're gonna make a track through your bed and it's not gonna look as pretty. And all I do is keep an eye on to make sure that my my gear is turning both my wheels are turning. You kind of do just have to have some faith that the seeds are going to come up, but they always do. This handle can adjust back and forth. So depending on where you're at in your bed, you still, well, if you pull it all the way out, it doesn't work as well. <laughs> but that way, if you're in the middle of the bed, you can move the handle to whichever side you're walking on, which makes it extremely easy to push. And you have more control that way. I've had the jang cedar 
now since like the 2021 growing season. I really like it. I replaced the Earthway with this. I would definitely recommend if you are doing, if you're starting to scale up or you're interested in scaling up or you're thinking about selling at farmer's market or even you just wanna grow more food for your family. If you're seeding stuff by hand, like the Earthway is not horribly expensive. I would totally recommend getting into a push seeder. It saves so much time. Um, you don't have to, like I always like to string rows because I like them to be somewhat straight and I had a hard time doing that like in a garden when I was doing like more traditional gardening and not like this style of market gardening and stuff. So I would string my lines, I would dig a trench with a hoe, a regular hoe, you know, I'd sprinkle the seeds in, the spacing would never be right. Like I would, I would highly, highly recommend a push seeder if that's something that you're interested in. If you're just doing a few feet of something or, you know, like a little patch of spinach, then no, it's not the tool for you. But if you're growing more food for your family or you're interested in retail selling any of it, a push seeder is a great investment. And it doesn't have to be the jang seeder because the jang seeder is a bit pricier. But I have been doing this for a long time. It totally was worth it for me. And actually EPP owns this, Edible Prairie Project owns this because of a grant that we got to buy a bunch of infrastructure stuff in 2021. That is the bed of spinach all seeded. It doesn't look like much now, but soon there'll be little tiny things poking out and we'll have spinach. Space spinach has 25 days to maturity. That does not include germination time, so it's gonna take, I don't know, probably about seven days or so for this to germinate. It's hot, so that's gonna probably help it along, although spinach is like can be a cold weather crop as well and there's some varieties that are better for heat and some that are better for cold space kind of seems to do well for me no matter what the season but yeah so a week to germinate then 25 days is that what i said and then we'll be harvesting spinach i'm going to go do just a whole bunch more of that i am just going to walk back and forth put different crops in like i said beets carrots cilantro parsley that type of thing i was going to put in some arugula but i didn't bring that with me so i may have to just do that another day i might be able to do that next to my rainbow chart and like at the end of the week. So I've got baskets tomorrow for Edible Prairie Project and then Farm Store opens on Wednesday for the public. So the next two days are spent harvesting and that's why I need to get this done tonight. But I'm gonna just walk back and forth a million times. You've kind of already seen me do that. It's not super exciting. So yeah, let's get this done. Of course the main line's like all tangled and I have to find, I have to find the holes. just pops right back in. You actually get to custom, like I custom punch my holes for my drip line. I have a little hole punch tool that I use. I will reuse the drip tape for one season, but the main line I can use for multiple seasons. I just pull it out of the way when I need to till and then put it back down. I'm gonna go down to the far end. I'm gonna pull the ends, I'm gonna grab onto the ends, try and untangle them. This is easier if you have two people, but it's just me working on this right now, which is fine. It's totally doable with one person, but yeah, they're all tangled. So the easiest way I've found is to like go down to the ends, kind of pull them, do a little like double dutch jumps rope, get them untangled. I do staple my main line in so that I'm not pulling it. I want it to stay where it's at. There's a little bit of water that stays in the drip tape. It's not like super heavy or anything, but you can definitely tell that there's still some water in the line. That's not the one I want. Which one is it? Why can't I see? It's gotta be this one. Yeah, there we go. But it's tangled. See? Double dutch. <laughs> There's five lines of drip. It's all laid down. It's stapled on the ends. 
I haven't stapled it throughout yet, but I'm going to turn the water on and you can see how the drip works and how the water comes out of the emitters. I'm going to all my drip in, except for I forgot the other day when we were harvesting cabbage, Catherine accidentally cut the cabbage and she cut the drip line, so we had a little casualty. And I don't have any more drip tape with me right now. I have more, but it's back at the shop. So I made a plug. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in to the hole so that it plugs it, so that I'm not leaking water all over. And so the hole in the main line where the drip tape connects to, I'm going to put in this little plug that I made. So this is the barbs. They go into the main line and then this is what the end looks like you reuse these so this one's got all kinds of like mineral on it my water's super hard my winter water has a ton of calcium in it my summer water i switched to a different water well and it has a lot of iron and other minerals in it so yeah all my stuff kind of looks like this and so that means i use the drip tape for one season and then it's relatively inexpensive per foot and like the emitters get clogged and stuff with my water and so it's just better like I will have a better crop if I just use the tape for one season. I used to try and go for two but I'm just finding more and more it's just better to just trash the tape after one year and start with new tape. So I'm going to put this plug in and then make sure my timer is all good to go and we'll have a spinach, beets, carrots, parsley, cilantro, zucchini here in just a few weeks. It's crazy to think that it's time to already do like the fall garden, the winter garden. Summer's going fast and I still have lots of things I want to do on my to-do list. So this is one thing done. I'll put more stuff in when the scallions and everything come out. So probably next week. So I'm just chugging along, knocking things off the list. Glad Ethel is back. I checked on her uh, earlier today. She didn't run away from me. She let me pet her. So making some improvement there and she's definitely feeling better so this week's been better so far it's only Monday I shouldn't say that <laughs> all right as always I appreciate so much that you guys are here have a great evening have a great day and I will talk to you later